out there who deny evolution for various reasons um, I'll talk to the creationists first the creationists that actually believe in a literal genesis um, and a 6,000 year old earth um, I'm just just wondering why um, y you feel the need to deny modern science to to prove God's existence? Is that, that what you're feeling? There's a very good reason why many Christians and creationists deny evolution. The reason is evolution and Christianity aren't compatible. But even more, they likely know that if evolution were true, Christianity would be completely undone. Let's first lay down the six reasons why Christianity and evolution are incompatible. Reason number one. The Bible asserts that man came from dirt and women from a rib. Evolution proves we came from precursor primates. Reason number two. The Bible asserts that there was no death before man sinned. Evolution shows there was much death before man ever existed. Reason number three. The Bible and Christianity assert that man was made either right at the creation of earth or sometime soon after. Evolution shows that humans didn't form slash arrive on earth for billions of years after earth was formed slash created. Reason number four. If you believe in the Bible and it's God by extension, then you think a supernatural phenomenon created evolution or created with evolution. This is in contradiction with evolution, whether planetary, stellar, or biological, that a natural phenomenon created. Reason number five. The Bible claims that as complex an organism as man was made in three days by what amounts to magic, wishing something into existence. Evolution proves that a complex organism like man was created over millions, if not billions of years through trial and error, slow development, and countless starts and stops through mass extinction events. Reason number six. The Bible claims that man was made in God's image, and God is supposed to be perfect. Yet by any stretch of the imagination, humans aren't made perfectly. Greetings YouTubers, I'm Stuttering Dave as I'm sure you know. Um, in the video I'm responding to, the, the person who made the video asks the question, because uh, evolution is a process with no particular goal in mind, and any specific outcome, including us, was had an extremely low chance of occurring. Not that this is a good evidence against the existence of evolution at all, but that's kind of another topic. So. How could a personal God work through such an imprecise uh, process with such an imprecise result? I mean, if there were a divine being, it sh shouldn't he be able to work through a natural process? And I think God could easily have controlled them in order to produce us to an extent. So I do believe in directed evolution to a sense. So in the end, uh, God... Um, uh, un uh, controlling evolution in a way that is undetectable by the scientific method is no different than him controlling circumstances in any other event that are, that are undetectable by the scientific method. 
I will now lay out the fundamental argument as to why Dave, as well as any other Christian, cannot accept evolution without completely undermining and indeed undoing the very legitimacy, validity, and point of Christianity. The cardinal theme of Christianity is that Jesus Christ died and was resurrected for human sins. Humanity was supposedly deserving of death and Jesus paid the price. In Christianity, the reason Jesus had to die was because of the original sin brought about by the insubordination of Adam and Eve. Because of their actions, everyone is supposedly born a sinner. Without this notion of sin, there would have been no need for Christ to be punished or die for mankind. Therefore, the very foundation of Christianity is based on this theme of Adamic sin. If evolution is real and true, then there was no actual fall from grace. With no fall, there is no introduction of original sin. With no original sin and ejection from the Garden of Eden, then there is no Christian validity to Christ, his need for dying, or the idea that sin entered the world. Even if the Bible is read metaphorically, evolution being true is the total undoing of Christianity because not many Christians, even if they take talking snakes and magical trees as metaphors, will be inclined to take the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ metaphorically. There must be a real and actual reason why Christ had to die. The entire message and faith of Christianity beyond its moral structure would be meaningless unless Christ died for something important. Sin must be real. A real sin can't come from a metaphorical fall. A metaphorical fall is not serious enough to justify such a sacrifice. Evolution shows that there was death before man, so there was no original sin, and the Christian faith comes totally undone. Some Christians, in an attempt to rescue their religion, will agree that there was death before humans, but man, since he has a spirit or a soul, didn't die until the fall when sin was introduced. Again, if evolution is true, this won't work. A soul or spirit denotes special creation. If evolution is true, the Christian God is not the creator of mankind, the evolutionary process is. Indeed, with evolution being the creator of human beings, there will be no foundation upon which to claim that a deity created man differently from all the other animals, creatures, and organisms that developed through evolution. If they didn't get souls by way of evolution, then it's completely invalid and erroneous to assume humans got souls or a spirit by evolution. sin. Well, I do believe in Adam and Eve. Um, I believe somewhere along human evolution, God planted a soul into the um, human and gave them the knowledge of the moral law and um, good stuff like that, just to rule over the human. That makes us very different from the rest of the animal kingdom. Um, now, I don't believe in like a talking snake. I believe when our fall was just disagreeing with what God had to say. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think the authors of Genesis were trying to, um, you know, describe it well. And um, they, they happened to use a snake as um, a metaphor. But there, there is no conflict between God and science. I mean, only if you insist on taking a literal Genesis. One of the most common rebuttals to this gargantuan conundrum for Christians is to try to take certain parts of the Bible as allegorical rather than literal. In actuality, this falsifies their mythology and faith even further since it makes the entire religion and Bible subject to fallacious ad hoc reasoning and special pleading. Since they try to make special pleas to exempt certain parts of the Bible from being taken as real while other parts are. But there's not much besides subjective desire that stops a person from saying the whole Bible, save some historical accuracy, is just an allegory with moral tales and fables thrown in. Even attempts to bring some form of procedure to such ad hoc biblical interpretation, like the Christian hermeneutic process of the historical grammatical method, is still liable to extremely subjective interpretation and arbitrary picking and choosing of which parts of the Bible are actual and which parts are fictional. 
It would be like trying to use an historical grammatical method to determine which parts of Anna Karenina were historically accurate and true and which parts were purely fictional. A person could easily say the whole book is basically fictional, just the same as can be said of the Bible.